What's going on guys? Me and my son Landon are gonna do some blue cat fishing today here on Taylorsville Lake. The water temperature is about 40 degrees. The shad are starting to get schooled up really, really thick. I know a lot of people struggle to catch gizzard shad in this cold water, but if you use your electronics, it's actually one of the easiest times of the year. So I'm gonna show you guys today how I go about getting these shad in the winter time. Hopefully we can catch a uh, net full of shad on our first throw we're gonna keep them alive we got our bait tank with us here and we also got a a special guest on the boat today we got these stray cats that hang out around our house there's probably four or five of them there and i think they started hanging out there because i backed this boat in there's always a piece of shad or something for them to grab the past few trips when we have gotten to the lake we've had us a little buddy crawl out from under the front deck there as long as he don't eat my skipjack or shad, we'll be fine with him. So this is by far the most important tool on my boat right here in the wintertime. Without this, I'm going home. I'm not real good in cold weather. And uh, got to have this. Okay guys, I'm gonna be throwing a nine foot, a nine foot cast net here with one inch mesh. This particular net's made by Lee Fisher. I can't remember the exact name of it. I think it's 1.4 pounds per foot. It's gonna get to the bottom really quick. It's got one inch mesh. That way you don't have to deal with all those smaller shad. I don't really use anything less than eight inches and uh, anything less than that'll go right on through this net. Now when the water's really cold like it is today, if you have a really warm sunny day where the sun's beaming down on the water and warming it up, shad will just stack up on these flats and then you can just throw your net anywhere and load up on bait. But on a day like today where it's overcast, the air temperature is colder than the water temperature. Pretty much have to use your uh, side imaging and down imaging to find these shad or you're just gonna be you're just going to be throwing your net all day. It's a little different on every body of water because some bodies of water have a better shad population than others. So we're going to be using a combination of down scan and side scan to find these schools of uh, gizzard shad. Now whether you have a Garmin, a Lowrance, a Hummingbird, it's going to look pretty similar on all those units. You can see the boat ramp on there. We're just going to cruise around on this flat and see if we can locate some uh, schools of gizzard shad. And if that doesn't work, we'll head out to some deeper water. So you can see, guys, all these little white marks out there here. That's all gizzard shad. But we're looking, you know, we could probably throw our net on, on these fish and catch a couple. But since it is cold out here today, we're looking for that one huge school of shad. There's a little school of gizzard shad. Looks like smaller ones. There we go, guys. That's what we're wanting to see right there. A huge school of shad, and they look like they're really thick. So we're gonna go over here and put a white point on this. We're gonna mark that. Mm -hmm. All right, Landon, I need you to go back to the screen and tell me when you start seeing them come up. All right. I know about where they're at. Hopefully, we just load it up on bait. Looks like we got some. They're good ones, too. You got about seven. Six. And we got a red horse sucker in there. Wasn't expecting to catch that in the middle of the lake. <laughs> now 
we weren't directly on top of that school or we would have caught three times that many. What fell there? All right, we're gonna see if we can get on them a little better this next time. We, that's probably enough bait. We're only gonna be out here for a few hours, but we're gonna try to get a few more for you guys just to show you. Working that side scan, and when we see a big school on side scan, we're doubling back, spinning the boat around, and trying to get the net on them before they're gone. But there's definitely some nice shad up in here. There's some coming up on the right, or look at the left right there. It's a big pile of them on the left, 70 foot out. So we're gonna turn the boat straight towards them. Kind of eyeball what you think 70 foot would be. Shining. Good now, that's plenty of bait. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I see them shining up in there. <laughs> that's what you're looking to do right there, guys. Oh my gosh. I like to dump them straight into the tank, but when you get a net like this, I don't want to keep all these, so I'm just going to sort through and get the bigger ones out. Don't look like we got any suckers that time, but. Yeah, guys, so just like that, we've got bait. Well, we could probably fish all week with this much bait, but like I said, we're not gonna keep them all. It'd just be a waste. Just gonna keep the big ones. But that's how you use your side scan, guys, to load up on bait. Summertime, you know, you can catch that about anywhere. Out here in the wintertime, it's a little more tricky to get on them, but if you use your electronics, you can throw your net one time and end up with a net like this because they school up big time in the winter time. I'm gonna keep about 10 or 15 of these nicer size shad. Try to do this quick so they don't all die. Look at that cat, boy. He's He's in heaven right That's there. That's why they hang out on this boat. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Hopefully it'll help you guys out next time you're out on the water. Uh, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. God bless you guys. We'll see you in the next video.